the AUDL presents Ultimate Greatness, a series showcasing the most memorable games, athletes, and storylines in the history of professional ultimate. Welcome to a world where the majestic floating disc redefines possibility, and even at the pinnacle of competition, spirit and integrity still reign supreme. Previously on Ultimate Greatness, the 2019 New York Empire are now a perfect 14-0, inching one step closer to their first championship with a two-goal win over Indy in the semifinals. New York's final opponent is the Dallas Roughnecks, who fought off San Diego in their semi to reach the title game for the third time in four years. Now legacies are on the line as New York seeks to complete an undefeated AUDL season a feat that Dallas was the last to achieve three years ago. Back then, Bo Kittredge was a roughneck in pursuit of his third championship. Today, Kittredge is with the Empire and remarkably hunting his fifth AUDL title. All that hard work, all that mental preparation finally comes to a culmination where you're facing the Dark Lord himself, Jim Garantzer, and his team of uh, hyper-athletic, aggressive-throwing, uh, pretty dang good team who kind of have that swagger about them, the kind of swagger where you're like, oh man, you really don't want them to win because they feel like they're a good team and they walk like they're a good team and they talk like they're a good team and you're like, boy, I just want to shut them up. New York will begin on defense. Another famous ultimate player, Marquez Brownlee, launches the opening pull of Championship Sunday. And we are underway from San Jose. And Brownlee's pull sails out of bounds as these two teams get used to the wind early in this game. We welcome all those of you joining us around the world for the eighth AUDL championship game. Dallas Roughnecks going for their second championship after winning the title with a perfect season of their own three years ago. The New York Empire looking to win the title for the very first time. The first throw of the game, Abe Coffin to Kevin Richardson. Bo Kittredge on defense chasing Richardson around. It's Josh Aloro who starts on Abe Coffin. Matt Lamar on Henry Feruda. Mike Drost on Connor Olson, who dishes downfield to Thomas Slack. Brownlee has the Slack matchup in the opening point. This shot floating up there. Olson elevates and lands inbounds for the opening score. Ben Katz, Harper, Garvey handling for the New York offense. Jeff Babbitt starts the game on O today for New York. Jack Williams, his first touch near the sideline inbounds. Chris Larberg on Williams and shooting it to Ben Yacht. The first opportunity for Kai Marshall, and he comes up empty as Yacht flips it into the crowd after the immediate answer, just 20 seconds off the clock. Very different from the two games we had yesterday. 17-15 for New York, 23-18 victory for Dallas over San Diego. Abe Coffin, a much quieter game in the semifinals than he had in that South Final against Raleigh, but still very solid. Speaking of solid, Henry Feruda and Dalton Smith, you, you emphasized how important they were, and that disc kept alive by the tumbling Wilder. Shaky start for Feruda. Wilder bails him out after Olsen did, and Coffin threads the needle to Richardson. 2-1 Roughnecks. Kevin Richardson did not score any goals for the Dallas Roughnecks yesterday. Played a very solid game with 36 completions and no turnovers, but no goals scored. He gets his first today as Yacht shoots it. Looking for Lindsley. That's right on the money. Could not have been any more perfect for the undefeated Empire. I think both coaching staffs, Wes Nemec for Dallas, Brian Jones, the head coach for New York, had game plans for their opponents today in their minds coming into the weekend, but they didn't want to think about it too much because they didn't want to overlook the Indianapolis Alley Cats, the San Diego Growlers. 
Peruta rises up for the Wilder dump. What's New York doing to slow Dallas down here? Well, you can see they're very deliberately peeling off their man-to-man -man assignments and trying to anticipate that next throw. Heard a whistle as the throw went off, and a triple team was called with three defenders all within 10 feet of Abe Coffin. You're allowed to double team in the AUDL, but you can't triple team. Whistle ended up helping the Empire, though, because Coffin had completed the pass. So Abe now doubled by Drost and Kittredge, resets to Richardson. A quick touch for Smith, and in the end zone, it's Wilder. Still no turnovers through the opening five points. That possession took about 90 seconds off the clock, by far the longest point yet. Disc has not touched the turf yet for either side. Here's Lindsley shooting it for Yacht, testing Marshall. Another opportunity, and Marshall comes up with a disc. His sixth block of the weekend, and the first in the final. Kaplan Maurer picks up the disc for the Dallas defense, and Gabe Hernandez rips a flick half the field, where Jack Williams gets a hand on it, and Jeff Babbitt picks it off. Dylan. Jack Williams with the team for New York. So Dallas not making much of its first break opportunity. See Jay Frude chasing Lindsley around. That's a pretty fun matchup too. Nice job defensively by Mauer denying Katz the reset. It's Hernandez on Garvey, and now Babbitt's going deep. We do see Zach Marbach on the field, which is a good sign because he left the game yesterday. This is Connor Klein up the line, and he beats Griffin Miller to the spot to tie the game at three. Certainly expect this game to be another tight one, just like it was last year when they met. Dalton Smith picked up by Jabron Meeser. Here's Coffin with a Loro on the mark. Again, Kittredge is Richardson. Lamar on Feruda. Brownlee on Slack. Downfield Wilder chased by Ryan Drost. And Mike Drost poached off to allow Connor Olsen to get open. Dalton Smith throwing and going, runs over Drost in the process. And the whistle blows. And Mike Drost is like, yeah, you ran me over. Coffin swings for Richardson. On a switch, Lamar has him now. And a pick downfield will slow the Roughnecks down and cost him 10 yards. Legal pick set this possession has to please Brian Jones it, on the New York sideline. You read my mind. The Dallas offense having to work harder and harder for every yard, complete a greater volume of passes than some of their earlier possessions. Who knows, they may not get a turn here, but the energy expended and the accumulation of that pressure can matter later in the game. Yeah, and you can see them having to second guess their first and second looks. Abe Coffin and Thomas Slack to culminate the point that took almost two minutes off the clock. And Dallas chose to roll the pull intentionally out of bounds, so New York starts about 25 yards from the end zone, they attack on the sideline, and Garvey hammers across field to Babbitt. Ben Yacht has been involved in all three New York scores so far, dishing two of them and catching the opener. Got Joel Clutton active today. That's a change in the Roughnecks lineup from yesterday. Same seven out there for Dallas offensively. Coffin, Feruta, Smith. Slack, Olsen, Wilder, and Richardson. And there's a miscommunication there, but it's saved by Wilder. Another shaky moment for this Dallas offense, and you feel them teetering on the brink. Dalton Smith keeps it alive and then throws to Richardson, who runs it down, living dangerously. Dallas back up by one, 5-4. New York back on offense. Kaplan Maurer bouncing around on Harper Garvey. Jay Frude 
chasing after Lindsley. Marshall try to get the D underneath, but it's Yacht who's been involved in every goal so far. Lindsley downfield for Katz, and here's Garvey into the end zone. The streak continues. Ben Yacht, who was involved in 15 of the 30 goals in the semis against Dallas a year ago. Six of the Yacht brothers, including Ben, are here, and several of them were on the field playing a little pickup after the Dallas-San Diego game wrapped up last night. My hat's off to Mama Yacht. I have one son, and that's enough. <laughs> Shout out to Weston. <laughs> and Dallas trying to take their time. Olsen, Smith, and Coffin playing catch. This is kind of how. Dalton Smith racked up 57 completions and 57 attempts last night. A lot of sure-handed decisions. Roughnecks seem very content here to play patiently and let Dalton Smith drive the boat. And great point by Smith. He told Olsen to find Feruda. And that extra feed opened up Smith in the end zone wide open for the Dallas score. I mean, tic-tac-toe. How about Dalton Smith's vision? Still only two turnovers in the game as the deep shot goes to Yacht. He had tons of steps. I right, beg your pardon, that's Grant Lindsley. First goal that Yacht is not involved in goes Garvey to Lindsley, and I'm not sure what Jake Reinhardt's plan was there. They did things that I think the sport of Ultimate is gonna look back at and be like, oh, this is how Ultimate can be played. Like, this is the standard for what Ultimate should be going forwards. Under a minute to go in the quarter, sending Carson Wilder as he accelerates and breaks away from Gibran Mieser. You know, I think last night, Connor Olsen went back to the hotel room and recharged the rocket launcher. <laughs> he dumped some more gas in it, made sure it was good to go this morning. His throwing prowess on display here at championship weekend. Second goal for Wilder, first assist for Olsen. To Lindsley underneath this time with Frued defending. Here's Katz, Garvey. Just about 30 seconds left in the opening 12 minutes. The next 36 can be just like this first 12. Well, I'll be feeling pretty happy later today. 50-50 hanging up there, and it's Yacht, who was not the intended target, who skies over Olsen, and Connor pushed him after the play. Said, that was for me. Yacht to Babbitt for the Empire score. 13 seconds left. It's number 13, Dalton Smith, has the disc, and he's unmarked. He can hold it forever, but that's okay with New York. Dalton forced to launch, and this is not going to make it to the end zone. Ben Yacht adds to his stat line with a block to close out the quarter. Seven all, Dallas and New York. For the second we go, San Jose. One thing I'm not sure Jeff Babbitt gets enough credit for because people think of him as such a hulking defender. That guy has really good throws, too. And Brian Jones, when I asked him why put Jeff Babbitt on the O-line, said he's a really good offensive player. He can almost always get an under whenever we need him to. Said Bo Kittredge played offense yesterday in part to be a defender on the field to defend the upwind end zone. And that was an effective strategy because Indy didn't break New York upwind until the second half. Babbitt getting an under on Clutton. Gives it to Lindsley.
You know, we've seen a lot of teams throw double teams on the sideline. We're not seeing that from Dallas so far today. And that's through the hands of Williams. An unforced, uncharacteristic error from Jack Williams. Dylan Larberg will scoop it up to initiate Dallas's second break chance of the day. And you could anticipate that whistle coming. It's a timeout for the Roughnecks. Dave Coffin double teamed. Dumps it deep into his own end zone to Kevin Richardson. Richardson squeezes it to Smith, who throws it right back to Richardson, who's unable to make the play. Dalton's first thrown turnover of championship weekend. Matty Weintraub picks it up and blades it to the back of the end zone, and Mike Drost makes the catch. Abe Coffin immediately apologizes for clipping his leg on the way by. Caught by Ruta to Smith to Coffin. Already close to midfield, and that throw is low, and Abe Coffin turns it over. His first throw away of the final, second of the weekend. Bo Kittredge, whom, by the way, is looking for his fifth AUDL championship today with four different teams. And no player in the history of American professional sports, the big four, Major League Baseball, and our defense, that game, played some of the best defense we've ever played. And to kind of show them that we are willing to run with them the entire game, that no matter what they did, we would be right there, just like right next to them, over and over and over, eventually caused them to break. Who can do what they've been practicing on the practice field all season long? Garvey looking for Williams, who makes a tough one-handed lunge and grab. And then shooting it for Lindsley into the corner. Jay Frude was there, and Lindsley sensed his presence. Rose up early to make the catch. Dallas back on offense. Smith is going deep. He's got steps on Mieser, and another gorgeous throw. For the Roughnecks, this time Carson Wilder put it on a platter for his elder teammate, Dalton Smith. Remember, we mentioned Dalton Smith has been in graduate school for physical therapy. Garvey's diagonal hammer is perfect. Dylan Larberg held Yacht in contain about as long as anyone has before Yacht finally shook free to catch another Empire score. His variety of release points and different throws that he's proficient in certainly make him comfortable in those spots. Slack to Richardson. Dallas trailing New York by two. A little over four minutes gone here in the second quarter. Here's Dalton Smith again. And Wilder taken off. Kittredge just saw poached off deep. That left someone open underneath. Right now, Thomas Slack is uncovered. And he picks up 10 yards underneath. Lindsley crossing over to play defense on Dalton Smith this point as well. Wilder holstered with a double team, gets it to Smith, who's triple team momentarily, and you do see the call. Jack Williams trying to argue that he was nearby Abe Coffin, but looked like a good call from here. Smith scubers to Wilder. <laughs> and he throws a strike to Kevin Richardson. He appeared to tweak a hamstring chasing Grant Lindsley as he ran for the first break of the game. The only break so far, Williams to Lindsley to make it 9-7. After the game began with 15 consecutive offensive holds, just a few chances for each team in those first 15 points. 
Downfield, Yacht unable to recover. Kai Marshall's just like, I had position, bro, bro. Here's Marshall. Bobbled, but hung on to by Chris Larber. Here's Gabe Hernandez. To Kaplan Maurer. The Dallas Roughnecks in search of the equalizer. Into the end zone. Ben Rogers. We could not pull away from them, even though we were playing our best ultimate. That was our best game, by far, that we've ever played, and they were right there. Yacht picked up by Ben Lewis this point. Rogers, who caught the break, just recently turned 21 on Connor Klein. Here's Williams. Fun matchup with Dylan Larber. Needs a reset. Finds Katz. Five minutes to go in the half. There's a hardy Roughnecks rooting section right in front of our booth, imploring Dallas to defend. Here's Kittredge, 10 yards away. High release flick to Lindsley. Bo reaches into his bag of tricks. Both teams' O-lines have now been broken once. Had 19 holds and two breaks for the first 21 points in the final. Nobody was getting upset. Everyone was like, we'll get them next time. We'll get them next time. We'll get them next time. Over and over and over. And that's the type of mentality that we've been trying to build the whole year was that idea that, like, it'll come if we just keep working. Slack. One of several members of this Roughnecks team who is initially anointed as a practice player on the roster before earning their spot. Coffin to Olsen. Got Wilder wide open, taking advantage of Alarcon, who had poached away into the double team. Risky, but successful. Marbach sets the mark. The Cats. Athletic kick from Larberg to prevent the around. And here's Connor Klein. Bluffs the flick and the hammer. Stall count. Ryan throws a blade and it finds the turf. Griffin Miller got his hand on it for Dallas. The Dallas Roughnecks led by one throughout the first quarter, but they've never been up a break, and Dylan Larberg wants this throw back. Can Kaplan Maurer bail him out? No, Grant Lindsley seals it with an interception. And Yacht fires to a wide open Harper Garvey. No one within 20 yards of him when that throw went off, and Yacht picks up another assist, his fifth. Just leaving golden opportunities on the table. Right, there are not going to be that many opportunities, not nearly as many as there were last night. They have to value the disc when they get those opportunities. I saw Dylan Larberg chatting with the defensive, or the uh, coordinator, assistant coach, Jim Davis, defensive coordinator for the Dallas Roughnecks. Two experienced assistant coaches under Nemec and Jones, and Jim Davis and Dave Blau, as this ambitious throw is gonna work. Abe Coffin angled it perfectly, dropping the hammer into Connor Olson's bread basket. Matt Armour is on Harper Garvey, downfield for Lindsley. Already a yard across midfield after the OB pull. Solid first half for Harper Garvey. Completed all 20 of his throws so far as we see Lewis foul Yacht. It's funny, Ben Yacht, like his only completions in the game to this point until then were for goals.
A whistle right as Williams released. A pick is called. Part of what enabled Connor Klein to become so open on Maurer. Clock stops with 36 seconds left. Can one of these two teams take a lead into the locker room at the half? Oh, that disc was almost denied by a hunting Clutton. I'm not sure about Dalton Smith taking as long as he did to pick that disc up, although he baited the double team and then went right over it to Feruda. No changes to the Dallas O-line in this end of quarter situation, which could come into play if they turn it. Each team does have a timeout if they need it. As we tick down under 10 seconds, Feruda takes a shot. And that's on the money. Oh, what a gorgeous put from Feruda to Olsen. These two guys who have stepped up so mightily. We're tied at 13 with three seconds on the clock. Here we go. New York sending Brownlee, Yacht, Babbitt, and Kittredge deep. Garvey picks it up. He'll easily be able to get this to the end zone. Can Dallas come up with a stop? That disc is incomplete as the bodies tumble. And the first half concludes. Ian, your big picture thought heading into this third quarter is what? Dallas needs to value its break opportunities more highly. I want to see better decision making if they're able to get turns. I want to see better decision-making from that D-line offense. Megan, anything to add? I have to echo Ian's sentiment. I think that the Dallas D-line might have to be prepared to play some small ball. Oh, if they get This a is a shot that's testing the New York defense. Connor Olsen is up to the task. In between Drost and Mieser, it's Olsen who shines above. It's almost like this one was up into double coverage with the backside help that Jabron Mieser was recognizing and trying to bring, but man. Connor Klein over to Grant Lindsley. Reinhardt on that mark around to Katz, chased by L Larberg. And a low gliding throw into the end zone for Ben Yacht. Dalton Smith to Kevin Richardson. Before the game, Richardson and Kittredge were chatting. Dan Emmons came over. I started to walk over and join them, and they said I wasn't old enough to be there. They said it was the old guy section. I said I'm older than a couple of those guys. Feruda thought about the deep shot to Wilder. Thought better of it. Reset to Smith, who arounds for Coffin. Guys, Abe Coffin has been very solid in this game. You think if Dallas is going to win, he might have to do something heroic. Carson Wilder to Henry Feruda to punctuate that offensive point. Gabe Hernandez decides to do a little limbo show, ducking underneath the disc. That did not sail all that far, only about 50 yards downfield. And immediately Lindsley is within 30 yards of the goal line. Great handler defense from Maurer, denies the reset for Garvey, but instead Katz downfield, shakes free. And Katz named the best decision maker in the East Division. The Swiss Army knife for this New York squad. Three minutes gone in the third. Garvey scubers to Katz. Oh, so casual. I mean, that's just unguardable. The shoots Brewery, the 10th largest. For the most part, the Dallas Roughnecks have been 
exceedingly patient right up until the moment where they're not. And that's been a good recipe for them. They've been perfectly content to just chill until they lulled New York's D-line to sleep. Here's Wilder. Lefties it underneath Ryan Drost. Coffin. Crossfield Scuba. Feruda to a wide open teammate. Final couple of quarters of the AUDL season. Of course, we could play five more minutes and go the distance. Who knows? Jack Williams downfield to Grant Lindsley. That was the combo that dealt the first break of the game. This deep shot for Connor Klein, and he read it well. Chased by Griffin Miller, but Klein slam dunks the equalizer 16 all. Dallas centers it to Coffin. Jabron Meeser casually sets the mark. Downfield Richardson. Created some contact with Kittredge, no whistle. Olsen, standstill snag. Downfield it's Wilder, and again he just puts it up for Richardson and Rose at the last second. Armor marking Garvey. Hammer over the top, Williams cannot get there. A lot of young teams can sometimes react in a way that isn't positive, but every single time we met adversity, we reacted positively. Saw an early poach and a pretty quick trigger on the timeout call from West Nemec. Dallas retakes the field with Olsen, Coffin, Richardson, Slack, Smith, Feruda, and Wilder. No surprise, surprises. Alarcon and Meeser set the double team. Coffin's hammer cross field for Richardson, who's picked up by Kittredge. And great work by Richardson getting that disc back off the sideline immediately into the middle of the field, preventing any other double teaming or poaching. It was a difficult throw, what? but what a catch by Slack to maintain possession for the Roughnecks. And then Coffin unleashes Wilder versus Ryan Drost, and Drost wins the battle. Again, I, I don't understand that decision. Carson Wilder was already 25, 30 yards deep when Abe Coffin released the disc. I, I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, I think the adjustment then has to be on the cutters. I mean, clearly the throwers need to make better decisions. Looking for Meeser, and Drost got a little trigger happy. This was Mike Drost. Ryan got the block as twin brother Mike throws the turn. And Dallas has another chance to break, closing it on five minutes of play here in the third. And I think that was simply a trust throw, just trusting Carson Wilder. And you know, we've seen Abe Coffin make so many great throws and have them work out, but this has quickly become the ugliest point of the game. Garvey up the line, and in one throw, he hits Grant Lindsley to tie the game. All of us were anticipating this matchup coming into the weekend, especially when Dallas beat Raleigh. Flyers Empire game was so amazing in, in so many different ways. One of the games of all time in AUDL regular season play. This has a chance to be an all time final. There's been one AUDL final decided by the slimmest of margins. That was two years ago when Bo Kittredge and Grant Lindsley, San Francisco Flamethrowers, beat the Toronto Rush 30 to 29 in Montreal. So we continue to see. Dalton Smith carve up this Empire defense. A lot more traffic near the goal line. Richardson inspired a layout to keep that disc alive. Slack to the bidding coffin, unable to land in. No, they rule him in the end zone. Saying that first point of content. Contact in the end zone for coffin. 
East team losing a superstar. And now Dalton Smith subbing in as well. He's marking up against Grant Lindsley. Williams. To Katz. Under two and a half to play in the third. A rematch of last year's semifinal that Dallas won 32 to 30. Another high scoring shootout brewing today as Katz collects the goal from Garvey. The 16th time. There's great defense from Joshua Loro, but he hit Abe Coffin. There's been no foul signal yet. Injury timeout clock stops with 1.50 to go on the third. Take a look, see for yourselves. Was this clean defense from Aloro? You know, we'll see what happens coming out of this timeout, but I certainly don't feel like that was a call wasted. On the reset out of the timeout, Babbitt was hit hard by Smith. Clear contact foul, even though Babbitt caught the disc. Just a gigantic situation. Remember, New York will receive to start the fourth quarter. Foul on Dallas. Garvey to Williams. Looking for Babbitt. Smith there defensively, but Babbitt again through the contact. Hangs on to give New York the lead. Jeff Babbitt, boy, uh, what a monster. The way he was able to generate uh, not only turnovers, but points at critical areas is the most special talent I think we have on the New York Empire and his ability to buy in to not turning the disc over sets him apart from almost any other player. Final minute of the third. No changes to this Roughneck Zoll line. Still Richardson, Slack, Olsen, Wilder downfield with Coffin, Feruda, and Smith. Crossfield shot, angled well for Wilder. If you're Dallas, you'd love to score here and not give the Empire another chance with the size and explosiveness that they have in end-of-quarter situations. Coffin, difficult hammer, and Peruta is there. Tied at 19. Another fascinating conclusion to the third quarter of championship weekend. Time winding down, Garvey's going to have to fire. He does get it off. He's got Yacht and Babbitt, and it's Babbitt in the end zone for New York. He's so big and so huge and so clutch. The best buzzer-beating athlete of the East, bringing in the 20th score for the New York Empire. This Empire team began the season with a three-goal win over the D.C. Breeze on April 13th. Their next game, they beat Philadelphia by nine. Every game since then has been decided by five or fewer, including two wins in double overtime. They beat Toronto by three in the East Division Final. They beat Indy by two. In the semifinal here yesterday, and in a one-goal game as the fourth quarter begins, Garvey on the sideline, double teamed, crossfield hammer, a rifle. Marksmanship on display from Harper Garvey. Ooh, nearly another block for Aloro on the mark of Coffin and as he tried to set his mark, he fouled him. Coffin takes a breath and 10 yards. One minute gone in the fourth. Looking for Wilder. Got him.
Carvey. The Cats. Just get the feeling Captain Maurer is going to get one of these dump resets eventually. He's been so close all game long, and his pressure may have led to that turnover. Larber almost threw it away, but he finds Maurer. Dallas does have one timeout left. Maurer scubers it for Larberg. Over the top. Testing Garvey. He's got the block. And you can see Kai Marshall just as frustrated as the Dallas Roughneck fans here in front of our booth pleading with Dylan Larberg to have more patience. Lindsley shooting it into traffic for Yacht. And oh. Yacht on the second <laughs> effort makes the catch for the score. He is so incredible. Entering this point, there are four players in the game that have two turnovers apiece, three of them from Dallas. Dalton Smith has two turnovers on 50 completions. Abe Coffin has two turnovers and 48 completions. Dylan Larberg, two turnovers, one completion. According to our official stats, and we appreciate all the stat keepers keeping all the great details for us. Dallas looking to slice the two goal deficit in half. Smith. Seven yards from the end zone. Low throw kept alive by Wilder. Levels the disc for Feruda. Right back to Carson. And Wilder's now plus 10 on the day. Mauer on Garvey again. Here's Lindsley. Babbitt beats Clutton underneath. And Yacht not on the field. Instead, it's a deep shot to Garvey, and Lindsley puts it right where it needed to be. Sam Fetter was close to pulling the trigger there on the reset defense, but Dallas able to maintain possession. A lot of physicality downfield between Dalton Smith and Sam Fetter. Some forearms, swim moves going back and forth between the two of them. Several members of the Dallas Roughnecks were tossing a football on the sideline before the game today. They initially said they wanted to play football and said New York has Jeff Babbitt. Do you really think that's a good idea? Olsen, full extension again, just shy of the goal line. And he throws it away. Richardson didn't really give him much. And a good mark put on. And the New York Empire will have possession of the disc and a two goal lead with six and a half to play. Cal called on the Roughnecks after the incompletion. No timeout here for Brian Jones to use and get his typical O line starters out on the field. Marquez Brownlee completes it across midfield for Mike Drost. Hammer reset to Jabron Mieser, who himself has played a ton of offense in his AUDL career. 18-year-old Tristan Yarder. Resets to the bidding Brownlee. And to the end zone, the Empire take their largest lead of the day. What a grab by Marquez Brownlee on the grand stage to keep possession alive. Great things happen when you swing the disc and you change the angle of attack. Having these two players who are just like two unique individuals on the team be able to perform exactly what we've been practicing all year under the biggest lights and make it look beautiful, 
You can't ask for more than that. They get this disc to midfield, and they continue breaking the mark all the way down that backhand side. It's basically Dallas's defensive line out there to get a critical hold of the Roughnecks trailing by as many as they've trailed all weekend. Contact foul on New York. Dylan Larberg, stall count rising, takes the easy completion of Hernandez. And here's Reinhardt. A lot of traffic near that front pylon. And Larberg turns it over again. Man, I, I feel like Larberg thought about hitting Kai Marshall in the back of the field, but actually holstered and then turned it over on what, what should have been an easy reset. Brian Holmes to Ben Katz. Pick down field. And the Empire will get to delete some more time off the clock. We'll take this under four minutes here. That's a dangerous bid by Reinhardt. And he's called for the foul. That's, that's just completely unacceptable. He's going straight into Lamar's back. I, I don't understand why that's not more severely penalized. Because in ultimate, we often penalize the result more than the intent or the action, which is often misapplied in the opinion of many. This throw hanging up there, and Griffin Miller rips it away. Remember that play with just under three and a half minutes to go. Roughneck fans, hold your breath with Dylan Larberg holding that disc in the red zone. New York playing really good red zone defense, but Maurer able to find his man in the end zone. 11-5 in 2013, lost to Toronto in the playoffs. They were 10-4 in 2014, lost to Toronto in the playoffs. They were 11-3 in 2015, and lost to Toronto in the playoffs. They were 7-7 seven, seven in 2016, Losing to the DC Breeze, and they missed the playoffs entirely in 2017. Returned last year after finishing the month of June with a below 500 record. They were four and five, closed the season strong under Eileen Murray. Ryan Jones takes over as head coach this year. The Empire had Grant Lindsley and Jack Williams. They've been the favorite from wire to wire. They have not been unchallenged throughout the season. Contact They have been tested frequently throughout their East Division journey, an interdivisional game with the Raleigh Flyers as well. That very much could have gone either way, but here they are, now about two minutes away from an AUDL championship. Leading by two, Lindsley shoots it. Yacht, can he score one more? You better believe it. Goal number six for Ben Yacht in the final. I feel as though in an effort to increase the defensive intensity, Dallas is starting to initiate a little too much physical contact to their detriment. Desperation time for Dallas. They're on the verge of falling short in championship weekend for the third year in a row. and dime throws are perfectly okay with the New York Empire defense. Mike Drossman flying by, deep shot goes up, and that's going to be too far for Connor Olsen. Worst case scenario there for New York with the Callahan. Great effort from Wilder, but the Catch made by Aller Khan. No timeouts for New York. But they are progressing just fine with their D-line. That has answered the call today. We were wondering, would their depth be able to match Dallas's? But between Marquez Brownlee, Mike and Ryan Drost, Matt Lamar, 
Sam Fetter, Tristan Yarder, Albert Alarcon, this core, many of them Empire veterans, have had the goods when it's counted most. And Alarcon with the exclamation point, 26-22, the New York Empire can taste the title now. New York has scored seven of the last ten goals. A stretch that started on the Jeff Babbitt buzzer beater to end the third quarter. Another spectacular season for the Dallas Roughnecks, especially in the playoffs, where they take down Raleigh and San Diego to reach the final. Kyle Marshall with the time ticking away, Dylan Larberg. One more cross field hammer. And the game ends with a Larberg incompletion. That feels appropriate. The New York Empire, for the first time ever, are champions of the American Ultimate Disc League. Winning that 2019 season with the Empire, their joy and excitement and knowing how long they'd worked, how long they'd played Ultimate, seeing that level of appreciation for accomplishing something and taking them to a place of kind of euphoria is something I think I'll chase for the rest of my life. And that team was the pinnacle of that.